Hello, I'm Jerry Kirkpatrick and I'm teaching the fundamentals of metal shaping. On May 30th, 2014, I delivered a modified Harbor Freight bead roller to Gene Winfield. Uh, this is a slideshow of how I made that bead roller. This is the basic bead roller uh, mainframe after everything has been removed. After all of the corners have been radiused and uh, ground smooth, I drill and tap a 1032 hole up in the uh, top corner there for a return spring. Next I drill that bottom hole uh, where the arrow is pointing at it to move the bottom shaft forward and cut a slot in the top that allows the upper shaft to move fore and aft. I used a piece of 3 8 by inch and a half hot flat bar and shaped it to give support to the mainframe uh, to keep it from twisting from side to side. On the longer of the two shafts, uh, the one that would usually have the handle for turning the, sh the bottom shaft, I turned that to 5 8 diameter and uh, milled a flat in it to accept a set screw. On the ends that hold the dies, I milled a quarter by 1 8 inch uh, slot for a keyway. Here I'm tapping the boss that will hold the T-handle for the uh, depth adjustment. Putting a radius on the end of the T-handle adjusting bolt. Drilling for the pivot point on the quick clamp attachment. Drilling the two holes for the spreader. Tapping the six uh, 3816 holes for the spreader. By drilling and tapping these six holes, uh, it does away with any other weldment that's necessary uh, to keep the mainframe from spreading once that uh, spreader block is bolted in place. These are the four blocks that hold the, the two shafts. If you notice the one on the left uh, has been milled so it doesn't protrude into the slot in the mainframe and the second one from the left has a 1032 hole drilled and tapped in it uh, to accept a set screw so you can maintain a close adjustment on the bolt that holds the uh, that block to the main frame. Here on the second one from the left you can see another 1032 hole has been drilled and tapped. Uh, that is for a 1032 screw that's put in there for the return spring. The three pieces on the left are the uh, pivot for the quick clamp uh, attachment and the other three is the T-handle for adjusting the depth of your rolls. Preparing to weld the bell crank. This is after welding both the bell crank and the T-handle and you can notice that one side of the T-handle has been knurled. Here all of the appropriate parts have been reassembled to determine the pivot point for the bell crank and T-handle adjuster. After drilling the mainframe with a half 20 threads, uh, the whole assembly was 
bolted together for the uh, quick release. Here you can see the uh, return spring. You can also see the set screw that keeps the bolt on the block from turning once you get it adjusted in the proper place. And I tried to get the T-handle bolt, the adjusting bolt, as close to the center of the shaft as I could. I needed to raise the quick clamp one inch in order for it to hit the uh, bell crank in the right place. And this was the only piece that I had uh, available to raise that. I took a AutoCAD drawing and glued it to the piece of aluminum and then uh, transfer punched and cut it out with a bandsaw. Here is the quick clamp and the pedestal all put in place ready to be welded up. These are all the parts necessary for the adjustable fence. Uh, all of these will be welded to the uh, piece on the bottom there with the two holes, which is the spreader. This is the whole assembly welded together. This is the removable faceplate for the uh, fence. And you'll see later on why this piece has to be removable. The next thing to do was to weld the support onto the main frame and uh, you can see how it leaves room on the top and the bottom for the six holes for the spreader. This is the quick release assembly. Here it is in the uh, open position and here it is in the closed position. Gene had a base at his shop uh, that he was going to use for mounting the bead roller when he got it. Uh, so I had to make a pedestal for the bead roller itself uh, that would have the same bolt pattern as his base. Here it is welded. I welded a small portion of key stock onto each one of the dies so when I slid the die over the shaft the key would go into the keyway that was cut into the shaft and that way the dies would not spin on the shaft. These are all the parts as they came back from the powder coater. the mainframe and base ready to be assembled, the bosses and return spring installed, both shafts and the retaining collars installed, the quick clamp set on its pedestal and the lovejoy installed, The quick release bell crank installed in the open position and in the closed position. The spreader mounted in its forwardmost position and it's also the holder for the fence. Here the fence has been installed. Here the top shaft is in its most rear position. I try to keep at least a quarter of the gear engaged both all the way forward and all the way aft. With the shaft all the way forward. Here the shaft is in the neutral position meaning that the gears are in alignment. Originally I was going to use a milling machine Power X to uh, drive the, the machine, but after getting everything assembled and trying to use it on an actual piece of material, I found that it wasn't near strong enough to do the job, so I had to choose something else. Here you can see I had to grind the uh, 
fence to make room for the two shafts and also on the back side I had to grind a couple of grooves so it would slide along without hitting the uh, main frame. With the quick release in the open position I mounted a skateboard wheel and a flat washer that I sharpened and uh, knocked off the, a sharp corner. And here in the closed position you can see that the washer goes quite deep into the skateboard wheel. Here the spreader is mounted in the forwardmost position uh, with the fence all the way back. When the fence is positioned in between those two blocks, the removable portion has to be taken off. You can see here that the fence can be pushed right up tight against the rollers uh, with the spreader in the most forward position. The spreader is now mounted in the middle position with the fence all the way back and here it is with the fence all the way forward. Here the spreader is in the most rearward position with the fence all the way back and here the fence is all the way forward. So with this arrangement you can see that you have uh, infinite adjustment with the fence in the full range of the depth of the throat on your bead roller. Earlier I said that the milling machine Power X didn't have enough power so I decided to go to the same arrangement that I have on my bead roller which is a 30 to 1 uh, gear ratio reduction box and a uh, Milwaukee variable speed drill motor at a right angle. This is the bracket that I made to mount the 30 to 1 gearbox. Here is the bracket, the 30 to 1 gearbox, and the Lovejoy mounted to the bead roller. Here the Milwaukee drill is in place. With the original handle that came with the drill motor, uh, it, you can see that it's resting right on that bracket and it uh, just turned out perfect so that the body of the drill does not interfere with the slot in the mainframe of the bead roller. By loosening the bolt with the wrench on it there, you can uh, move the top shaft fore and aft. That's how you uh, arrive at the adjustment for your rolls. The last thing to do was to mount a rheostat, uh, the two pigtails hanging down there. One of them is for a on-off foot control switch, and the other one is where you plug in the Milwaukee drill motor, and they're pretty well complete. Here you have the completed unit. It has a fully adjustable fence. It has a quick release for the rollers. It has a variable speed motor with a foot control and the top shaft moves fore and aft an inch and a quarter. I finished this machine on a Wednesday and delivered it on Friday and Gene was quite happy with it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the bead roller or want to inquire about uh, sheet metal shaping classes feel free to give me a call at area code 707-459-2523 and look at my website at jerrykirkpatrick.com and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube video channel. Thanks.